married, has one son. Uh, Marshall is the owner of uh, uh, Chick fil A here in Knoxville. He started, I believe, in 1984 over in East Knoxville with the first Chick fil A, and now he has two Chick fil A's out here in West Knoxville. Uh, he's an advocate for uh, community service and individuals, and uh, he is, uh, like I said, owner of Chick fil A, and uh, as you all well know, is one of the most honorable uh, companies that I know personally and we're, uh, I'm glad to have Marshall here this morning to talk about uh, these things. He is um, going to talk about customer service and, and so forth. And it is my pleasure to have uh, Marshall with Thank us you, today. Gary. So I'll turn it over to you. Cool. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. Uh, been told I need this, so I'm going to use it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as Gary said, I'm Marshall Wilkins. I'm a West Knoxville boy. Grew up here in Knoxville. Went to Bearden High School. Went away to be a lawyer. Uh, started a construction company. Ended up selling chicken. So uh, you just you just never know where you're going to go. You just yeah. Well, it's it's good to be here. I'm glad I got in when I did get in with Chick Fil A. Um, I've been asked to talk about a few things. It seems like most people want, a lot of people want to know what makes Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. How can you take a fast food restaurant, first of all, which has a negative connotation in itself, that sells a chicken sandwich and turn it into something that people say nice things like Gary just said about who we are and all of that. Hopefully I'll share some of that with you today and make some points. Um, I will tell you, I am not a speaker per se, I'm more of a talker, and I'm also going to tell you, I'm probably not going to tell you anything that you don't already know. I'm going to talk about a lot of common sense things, I'm going to talk about, a, I'm going to remind you of a lot of things. Uh, hopefully they'll help you uh, and, and, make, and make this worth your time and you can take something home either as an organization or possibly even as a person. Now, I also have bribery. <laughs> I have toys and free food if you will help me and participate. I'm a lot better than an insurance guy back there talking or something like that. So, uh, no, so help me because you've got to realize when Alicia asked me to do this, <sighs> it's kind of a challenge to tie fast food and chicken sales to a resource agency, especially one that I knew very little about, quite honestly. Um, I've learned a lot. I picked Alicia's brain quite a bit, and I went on your website and learned quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit. I learned enough to be dangerous. Um, I will tell you this, shame on you. Shame on you for not telling more people, letting more people know what all you do. You all do a ton of great work. I almost look at you all as a little uni a united way in its own way. I was blown away. I said, Alicia, what do you do? Blah, 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 blah. Went on the website, and the list is that long, you all. It was unbelievable. But you all have, I mean, the more I get into it, I'm getting excited. Because what you all do is incredible, and if you're personally not getting something out of it, you're really missing the cue. Because you all really, really have a wonderful opportunity for the community, duh, but for yourselves also. Um, duh, you make people self-sufficient. You get people to places that they need to go to that couldn't get there without you and you take care of people that can't take care of themselves whether they're aging or they have other reasons that can't do it that is an incredible responsibility and I hope you realize the value of what you're doing and if you don't I'm going to remind you today how's your new branding going I heard about it in July what I added a couple of words to it real services with a real heart creating real impact that's pretty good I hope that's not a banner I hope that's in here and and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that because quite honestly the core to Chick-fil-a success is here 
It's not here. It's not here. It's who we are. And we're going to discuss that. I got a question. What do you think about when you think of the word Chick-fil-A? You had your hand up first. You'll get that really fancy one. Cows, chicken, faith. Whoa, that's interesting. I hear customer service. Look at that hand. She's knowing. We have a new grill advertisement. We have a new uh, barbecued, not barbecued, a grilled spicy sandwich that is killer, that is really, really good. I'll get back there. I'll get back there, I promise. I'll get back there. Um, I want to go, people are kind of, it's interesting how, again, I said this earlier, how Chick-fil-A is able to do what they do, why people say such nice things about them. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the, the what we are, the who we are, and how we do it. Give you some secrets. Throughout this talk, I hope that you'll take some of this and take it to yourself. Take it to your own organization. Because the further I got into this, the more I realized we really do the same thing. We're really doing the same thing. What we are, a man named Truett Cathy founded a little, opened a little restaurant in 1946 out by the airport in Atlanta. It's still there. That blossomed into, on his menu, coming up with a chicken steak sandwich. That thing took off. Matter of fact, that is the Chick-fil-A today. It was so popular that he went to this new shopping complex called a mall in 1967 and, and put food in the mall as a Chick-fil-A. Fast forward 20 years, they quit building malls. The mall of today is Turkey Creek or Emory Road area, something like that. So we realized we needed to get on the street. For the, since 1986, we've been on the street building what we call freestanding restaurants, which is what you see mostly in and around the area. Um, 2,100 stores pretty cool. By the way, for you all in finance and stuff, we're cash flow only. We have no debt. We're a nine billion dollar company that bills everything cash only. That's foundationally, that's solid. I think financially people would tell you if you can borrow money at three percent and make 20, why aren't you? But this is part of who we are and what Mr. Cathy, what Truett asked us to do and ask us to be. Uh, nine billion in sales, that's good. Now McDonald's, 37, 38 mi billion. So we're, we're small compared to the big boys, but again, we build on cash. We're in 45 states now. When I started, I think we were in 18 states. By the way, I started 37 years ago with Chick-fil-A in Johnson City. Every time I told someone what I was doing, I had to go, Chick-fil-A. I had to say it slowly, and then I had to tell them what it was. Now, you say Chick-fil-A, and generally, and this is wonderful, the first word I hear is, I love Chick-fil-A. So it's come a long way in, the, in that 37 years. Um, we have 100,000 employees that we serve, and you're going to hear that quite a bit, that serve you all. And that really is the core of this whole thing. That's what we are. Who we are is the single most important thing. That comes around by our culture. That comes based off our values. Back in 1981, y'all that were born, in 1981, Chick-fil-A was struggling. So our executive committee went away to come up with a plan to get the company going again. So everyone's at the home office going, what'd you come up with? It's kind of like Moses coming off the mountain. What do you got? Well, in a funny way, that's what they got. They got two sentences, and it was a corporate purpose. It wasn't about sales. It wasn't about anything. It was about who we were rather than what we did and how we did it. And it was a two-line corporate purpose of being a faithful steward of everything that's given to us and have a positive influence on everyone that comes in contact with us. So everything we've done since this, that day has been centered around that value, about, around that culture. Um, a culture and a value is kind of like your personal character. You've all got character. Character sometimes, and I, it catches with me, character is what you do when no one's watching. And our values and our culture is what we do day in and day out, not trying to impress anybody. 
It's just who we are. But as you know, with your character, it drives all your decisions, all your directions. Everything you do is based on that. So everything else that we do at Chick-fil-A is based on who we are, not what we are and or how we do it. Um, you know what the core of our culture is? Serving. I'm going to trip over this rug. Uh, it's serving. It's serving everyone in your organization. I hope I don't step on toes. I might actually. Maybe you'll want me to if you've got someone in your organization you don't like the way they do their job. But every organization has a way of leading or in some organization it's managing instead of leading. Our, org our way, some organizations do it with power. They do it with intimidation. They do it because they've been told they have that, that position. Chick-fil-A does it by serving. We feel very strongly, and Alicia can call bull on this. I told her if she disagreed with anything I said to please not put her hand up and don't put me on the spot. I would address it later. But my job is to take care of her. Because if I take care of her, what does she do? That's, yeah, I wanna, I'll, I'll give everybody one when we're done. How's that? I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find you if I, if I had to. But you know, it's what you, and you all know this about life. Life's a circle. If you give, you get. If you serve, you're served. And it starts with the Kathy family in Atlanta. It trickles through our home office, our support center. It trickles to me. I trickle to my leadership and my, and my team members. They trickle it to who? You. You know what that does? And this is the single most important thing I think I'm going to tell you today. You know what that does? That creates an environment, now catch this, that employees want to do their job. They don't have to do their job. We don't play cat and mouse. Now don't get me wrong, in my two stores I have 160 employees and probably 110, 120 of them are 15 to 25. Yes, I do play some cat and mouse sometimes, but generally speaking, and you'll see, I think, in our restaurants that our people are, our young people are better than most young people. But it's because of this servant leadership we give to them. Excuse me. Uh, it must start at the top. It must continue through the organization. And if there is someone in that trickle down that is self-serving, they need to either need to get out of the way or you need to go get around them. Because that will blow and that will mess up everything that you're trying to do. You know the interesting thing about leadership? You're not a leader without what? Followers. Hey, let's go on this hike. Y'all ready? You know, I take off and I look back and nobody's behind me. You're not leading anybody without followers. To follow someone, you must trust them. To trust someone there has to be a relationship started. To start a relationship, there has to be some interest generated. And to show interest, you must truly care. If you want to lead somebody, you need to care about the person. Your organization, your people at the top, hopefully, and I don't know enough about your organization, hopefully they care enough about you that it shows to a point that you do trust them, that you will follow them. Then you all can go wherever the organization, wherever your values, wherever it takes you. John Maxwell, who I love, he's a positive thinking uh, leadership uh, guru, made a statement that kind of clicks. People don't care what you know until they know how much you care. And, it, and I think it's really, really, really the truth. This servant leadership is the core of Chick-fil-A. If you want to know why we work, it's because I take care of Alicia. I take care of all of these people, and in turn, they take care of you all. And by the way, you need community within this organization. Hopefully you all do things like this. Do things together off the job so that you, you do build trust. You do build the community within WIN. Because you all, as I understand, you have about 40 different areas. So you've, it's real important. We run our restaurant in three sections. 
the front of the counter, the front of the house, the drive-through, and the back of the house. Completely different teams, but I spend a ton of energy working them together to build community so that they can count on each other and support each other. We don't want to be a bunch of silos standing separately within our organization. So if you're not pleased with that, work with your leadership. Leadership, if you're not pleased with it, serve your people and take it to them because I promise you this community is as important as the paycheck in a lot of cases. I, I, feel, I feel it can make a huge difference. We lead people by serving them and creating employees that want to do the right thing. Now, what's our service model? You know what our mission is? Be remarkable. That's it. That's, that's a two-word two -word mission statement. But remarkable has double meanings other than just being remarkable, but also with social media, as you can imagine. Get people, get on the phone while you're there. Hey, I just had a wonderful tweet that you just had a wonderful chicken sandwich or whatever. How do we do it? Basics. We have our core four. And this, this is, you all do a lot of interaction with your people. And what, what is your term? Is it your customer, your pay? What, what do you call the people you serve? Client, okay, thank you. I didn't ask that question and I didn't want to stumble through it. Hopefully I won't any further. But you've got to have a servant's heart. You've got to talk to them. eye contact. Smile. This is what we do at the counter. It's just simple. Stay connected with them and talk with enthusiasm. That's how Chick-fil-A does it. Here's what's the toughest thing. And you all do it. You all see so many people. Is to see a person. To see that an individual, not a number. We wait on, each store waits on about 3,000 people a day. And as you've seen the lines that we do have from time to time, it, you've got to see, not a transaction is our term, but a person standing there or a person sitting there. And you all are in a, in a, a business, in an industry that that's, that has to be the core. Please don't get caught up in Social Security numbers. Don't get caught up in, I've got seven people to see today. See persons, see individuals. Uh, it is a person, it's not a transaction. With a servant's heart, it's, you won't have to fight it quite as much if your heart is there to do that. Um, in review of this, and I'm not done, so don't start getting all excited. You've got, within your business, you've got to create a culture if you don't have one. It's based on your values, whether they're your personal or your organizational values. You've got to select the right people. We do that uniquely. I'm always given, how do you get these people? You know what we do? We don't interview one-on-one. -on -one. We do group interviews. You bring a 17-year-old or even a 27-year-old in there for a job interview, you sit them down in this cold room straight across from a person with a notepad taking notes, and can your personality come out? Heck no, you're scared to death. I, yes, I am a friendly person. You know, no, you don't do that. So we do it in a group. We have everybody come in and we get people interacting and we have a facilitator there. And while they're interacting, we're making notes on how they work, what they do and everything. That helps us select people. Then we love on them, we train them well. 50% of employees leave their job in the first 30 days. So we really focus on people those first 30 days. We all focus on people all the time, but we shepherd our people those first 30 days, keeping them in the business. Once we got the right people, again, I'm sorry, I'm beating this dead horse, we serve them. Our energy is to take care of them. We create employees, again, that want to do the job. And in doing the job, we don't want transactions. We want connections. I want people looking you in the eye rather than, that'd be $7.43. You know, here, ma'am, that'd be $7.43. Hopefully, when you come in our restaurants, it, and it, here's, the, here's the thing about Chick-fil-A or about fast food that stuff. The faster we are, the better we are. The better, the faster we are, the less time we have to show you how good we are. So it's, it's kind of tough. So we're going to speak to you, hopefully, every time we walk by you and make that quick connection because guess what happens? Over the course of your 20 minutes there, it will hopefully stack up 
to make that impression. Guess what 60% of our customers don't do? Guess what 60%, look at this, it's so cute. What, guess what 60% of our customers do? No, it's, that's more like 97%. 60% say thank you, no? My pleasure, no. What do 60% of our customers do? Or, Smile. Uh-uh. Okay, hint, hint. Drive through. Who said drive through? There you go. So we got 60% of our customers don't even come inside. So what have we done to connect with them? We've taken little iPads outside. You're not, speak, you're not speaking to a box anymore. It's not a transaction. It's a connection. So we're going to get to talk to you person to person. Believe it or not, some people don't like that. But too bad. It's 99.9 99 .9 do like it. So we don't let the 1% bother us. But again, it's all the little things added up. The same thing with your organization and with you. Our way is this, and I'm going to read this part. It's the right people that care being led by leaders that serve them in an organization with clear and true purpose. Now, I'm going to tie most of this to you all now. But I do have two more miscellaneous things that I think are incredibly important. I'm okay on time. Anybody, I don't, I don't keep up. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know what the toughest system, businesses are run by systems of different type. You know, we have cleaning systems and cooking systems and service systems. You know what the toughest system I think is within most any organization? If anybody can guess this, I'll give them a whole bag of, chick <laughs> of nuggets. Communication. He did? <laughs> no, okay. There's, there's probably 600 free sandwiches right here. Here, I can't, I can't be too bad. Isn't it the truth, though? It really is. It's such a challenge because it's so many levels. It starts with leadership into your organization. It starts within your different levels of organization. And then it becomes a person-to-person -person deal. It's challenged all over the place. I think it, and it comes in so many different forms. It comes in so many different levels. It comes in so many varieties. And it also comes with that word that can be take, made fun of. And that is, it comes with assumptions. You all, it's mind boggling sometimes, when, just to, even to my wife, what I mean to say versus what she heard. And we have to be so careful here. We have to be so careful because our personalities, our upbringing, our sex, who we are, all these things play into this. I hope as an organization you work very hard to see that your message gets out. But it's equally as important to see that your message was heard. And you've got to ask people. Every, pe every person you deal with probably has a different level of communicating with you. And especially as a leader, you've got to be able to pick up what that person needs versus that person versus that person. I have a couple of people, and Alicia will probably laugh at this, I will literally ask them what I said when I'm done telling them. Literally. Because you know what they do? And my wife does this. This is recorded? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she, I will start saying something, which you all can tell, sometimes it's not worth listening to, but about halfway through... What I'm trying to say, her mind kicks in and starts thinking of the response, starts thinking of the situation. And guess what happens to that half of what I was saying? Boom. She doesn't hear it at all. So please, within your organization, at all these different levels, be very mindful of the importance of not just saying, but that you were heard and that the communication was complete. So many people think, well, I told them. That's not all you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make sure they hear and understand also. Second thing, as I'm nearly winding down, that all organizations have to deal with, and us that have been around a long time, and I see a little bit of maturity in here, and that is dealing with change. Change is tough, but change is so necessary in any organization to grow. Now, sometimes change, change isn't always good, but it's almost always good. But what happens is, some of us think, well, the way I do it is the best. 
Old habits are dangerous, you all. Please enter these moments of change, these times that you're having to do something different. Please enter with a half full glass rather than a half empty glass. Enter it with, okay, let me see first rather than, there's just no way that's going to work. That's just stupid. I, I challenge you, organizations get beat down because they refuse to change or the people within the organization won't listen and refuse to budge with them. Old habits are our worst enemies. Now, does this pertain to you all? Does it? I hope so. Because this is how we run a chicken restaurant. This is how we have people saying, I love Chick-fil-A. I don't think I have said anything today that you probably didn't already know. But, but I also hope that it brought a thing or two, whether it's personally or as an organization. Hey, maybe we do need to do this. Do we have a clear culture? And again, has that been communicated? Does everybody understand what they're in it for? Think outside the box a little bit. I challenge you to do that. Now, I don't know enough about your organization. I am, I'm sorry, but I'll be honest with you again, I think that's part of your fault too. The more I look at you all, I'm just blown away. Look at all the similarities, our cultures. We require leadership, who we serve. And by the way, who do I serve? Who do you think I serve? Of course, I don't worry about you all. I don't worry, I do, but I don't. I don't worry about you at the register. Because if I take care of the person that's taking care of you, I don't have to worry about you. So I hope that you all within your organization understand that the, probably as important as anyone else is each other, holding each other. You all are a team. And if, if somebody's not on the same play, the, the team isn't going to achieve what they want to achieve. Yes? One thing that I have found in Ezra, and it goes both ways, is we give and receive respect all the time. From each other or from your clients? Yeah, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. And, that, and that's the core. That, that is the core. And again, I wish I knew more about your organization, but boy, I've, I'm, I'm loving it. I'll tell you this. It takes some maturity to understand we all need relevance. We're not just passing through. I, I hope to make a difference to someone somewhere. I hope to be relevant. You all have an incredible opportunity to be relevant. You all have an opportunity to change lives. If you're doing this job just for a paycheck, what are you going to get out of it? Just a paycheck. You know, I was about to leave Chick-fil-A after seven years. I wasn't challenged anymore. I thought, man, yada, yada. All of a sudden, this was a God thing. Parents started coming back, ex team members, employees started coming back and saying, Marshall, you realize you said this, this, and this, or you did this, this, and this. And all of a sudden, I started feeling a relevance. I thought, wow, maybe this is my ministry. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And once you realize that and you made aware, there will be so much more value to your job other than just a paycheck. Remember, Everything's a cycle. You reap what you sow. If you serve, you'll be served. You all have an incredible opportunity. And I thank you as a Knoxvillian for filling the voids for people that aren't as blessed as we are. You all do a wonderful job. But you also have an incredible opportunity to have a value and a relevance to your life like most people don't. Because you're really, you're able to see the results of what's going on. I challenge you, don't make it a transaction. You do it so much, it's just another person. See the person. See, there, there's a story there. And you all can make an enormous difference. And again, do a better job of letting the rest of Knoxville, Knox County, East Tennessee, know what you do. Because you all could get so much more support, I think. I hope that I connected. I hope that you all see that Chuck, Chick, I'm glad I'm done. I hope that you all see that a chicken sandwich organization 
and a resource providing organization have a lot in common and we can get a lot out of it. I hope I have some chicken cards as I call them for that spicy sandwich or for a sandwich and I have some little cows and I am going to take some questions until I'm told that I have to shut up. If anyone has any questions or so forth. But that's all, all I have to say from prepared remarks. Yes. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> Ma mature. <laughs> yeah. I bet he said refresh. refresh. Yeah. Refresh. Yeah. And my question, and we heard from, from a consultant a while back in another meeting, the origin of my pleasure, because I heard that several times. Mm -hmm. We stole it. Mm -hmm. so that was Ritz Carlton. <laughs> Truett, Truett, Truett went to a Ritz Carlton and took the luxury hotel chain, and he loved that. Because so many things, and this is something I try to train to my people in not being trans transactional, and that is there's some things that people just don't hear anymore, and people don't hear your welcome. So we th say our pleasure because it is, it is heard better. But truth be, it is our pleasure. Your first point goes back to wanting to do it rather than having to do it. And that's, and that, that's the key. We want to make, we literally want to make you happy. We literally, and you know, let me, let me tell you this. This, I'm sorry, I get so excited talking service. Uh, I had an employee come to me after six months or so, four or five months, and she goes, you know what? Working here has actually made me a happier person when I'm not here. And I just went, yes, you know, because I knew it had sunk in and that she got it. I'm sorry. It's always going to shine when we're around it or through it. Absolutely. Well, no, thank, thank you for your words. Yes, ma'am. I heard something on the radio here today that said that you all are very successful, but something to think about is you all are almost closed two months out of the year. And you're still as successful as you are. Yeah, we, uh, our average, I'll probably tell you something you don't care about. Our average store does about four and a half million a year. Yeah, thank you. It's our values. And, and I'll, I'll tell you about this. I'm, I've, I've been asked, I hear you have to be a Christian to work at Chick. No, I've heard you have to be a Mormon. I'm serious. I've been, I've, I was told, I hear you have to be a Mormon to work at Chick-fil-A. You have to be this. You don't have to be any of that. You just got to be a good person and, and, and want to eventually want to serve people. And, and, that, and that's what ends up coming out. Our average store does four and a half million. The average McDonald's, who is second, will do less than three million. And guess what? We spot them 52 days a year. So we do, we do spot them. Uh, we're blessed because we, we understand what we have and where it came from. We, we, that's again, that's our values, that's our culture, that's who we are. I'll take that as a compliment, actually. Any other questions? Yes, Jeff. Yeah. 
I want, I want to tell you something that Dan did. Dan's kind of crazy. I mean, Dan's wonderful. You know, there's a, there's a fine line between brilliance and crazy sometimes. And I think he, boy, this is recorded. Oh, well, who cares? I've been around so long, maybe I, I'll, I'll get a pass on this. He did something probably 15 years ago that just blew my mind on this servant, trying to get it into our heads, the next level of servant. All of a sudden, we're at our national convention. We have what we have called consultants. They're, kind of, they're not district managers because we're not set up that way, but they're our lifeline, they're our spoke, and our information means to our home office in Atlanta. All of a sudden, these guys and girls come walking out with these boxes, and they found all of us who they worked with and served. You know what was in those boxes? Shoe brushes. And you know what they did? They came over to each of us, got down on their knees, and brushed our shoes. What do you think they were saying? That's culture too, y'all. And that just, that just hits me. And it, it, it just really told us what we are and what we're supposed to do. But yeah, that's, it's on the same thing. I don't think he put that on video. But as you can tell, it's still emotional to me. Any other questions? What was the second mile service with Dan Cathy? Yeah. Yeah. We've taken uh, second mile and kind of lifted it up to our first mile, I think, in a lot, in a lot of ways. All right, food's getting cold. I thank you all. Hopefully something happened. It was worth my time. I appreciate you all.